Excusez-moi, monsieur, j'ai été ici en premier. Oh, ok. Sorry. You can go first. Merci. Do you speak French? We are in Quebec after all. No, I don't speak French. I'm from Toronto. Oh, that's interesting. I'm François. Hi, François. Nice to meet you. I'm John. Nice to meet you, John. You're far from Toronto? Oh, I live in Montreal now. I understand some French. What are you doing in this town? I'm here on business. You know, we do business in French here. Not at my company in Montreal. They all speak English. Wow, really? That's against the law. What law is that? Law 101. They probably all speak English to you because you don't understand French. Oh, I forgot about Bill 101. Anyway, I think they speak English with everyone. Where do you work? CN. Oh my God, not CN. What's wrong with CN? Many years ago, the head of CN, Donald Gordon, said that there were not enough qualified francophones to fill management positions. Well, maybe it was true. No, monsieur, it was just discrimination, that's all. The best jobs went to the English. <laughs> President of the Canadian National Railways announced that there were not enough French Canadians qualified for senior management positions. Gordon's statement enraged the Francophone population, which for centuries had seen the best jobs always go to the English. The demonstrators served notice on Canada that Quebec will no longer put up with discrimination. Yeah, I guess so, but that's all changed. Now Francophones get the best jobs in Quebec. Yeah, but we had to protest to get those jobs. You mean bomb your way into getting those jobs? No, monsieur. There were no bombs. We Quebecois are civilized people. You might be civilized, but there were bombs. The FLQ planted over 200 bombs in Montreal in the 1960s. 200? No, I don't think so. Besides, that was a long time ago. It might have been a long time ago, but it's still important. And yes, it was 200 bombs. Where did you get that number? I was watching a documentary and they had a laundry list of places that were bombed. That's why Toronto is the largest city in Canada. What does that have to do with anything? Well, when all these bombings happened, people started to leave Montreal. 300,000 people left. Most of them ended up in Toronto. Some of my family left too. Yeah, but they were going to leave anyway. The bombs had nothing to do with it. Are you kidding me? There were bombs in mailboxes, bombs in dumpsters, bombs in people's homes. Jean Drapeau's house was even bombed. Mayor Drapeau? Yes, there are bombs everywhere. The National Revenue Building the RCMP headquarters, the Canadian National Railways, the Black Watch Armory, the Royal Canadian Air Force, the Queen Victoria Monument, the Grenade Shoe Factory, the Paul Sauvé Arena, Dominion Textiles, Standard Structural Steel, Eaton's, Murray Hill, Chambly Transport, the Montreal City Hall, the Bank of Nova Scotia, the Quebec Ministry of Labour, the Canadian Army, the Montreal Stock Exchange, the Queen's Printer, the Chateau Frontenac, the Industrial Acceptance Corporation, Mayor Drapeau's Residence, Loyola College, McGill University, the Bank of Montreal, and many others were bombed. In seven years, six people were killed. Imagine trying to send a letter and being killed? That scared people. To Toronto? Well, they were unilingual anyway. Good riddance. Not everyone was unilingual. My family spoke French. Many other people spoke French, but after a while, they just didn't feel at home here. Maybe, but there was no violence. 
Sure there was. They had to call in the army to prevent violence in this province. Yeah, that's when the army invaded Quebec. What do you mean? They came from the rest of Canada and took over Quebec. I don't think that's true. The army was already stationed in Quebec. There was no invasion. I disagree. Some of the armée was from English Canada. I saw it in an NFB movie. But the Canadian army is already moving into Quebec. The Montreal and Quebec governments formally request that Ottawa take urgent action. At 4 a.m. that morning, Trudeau's government invokes the War Measures Act, claiming that there is a state of apprehended insurrection in Quebec. Unaware that the law of the land had changed while they were sleeping, hundreds of astonished and outraged people find themselves abruptly taken from their homes in the dead of night and imprisoned. These people are to discover that under the War Measures Act, they can be kept incommunicado, that they will not be able to be bailed out immediately, that they can be kept in prison for up to 90 days without a trial, and that being a member of the FLQ has suddenly and retroactively become a crime punishable by up to five years in prison. You know we are a French nation here. I thought you were a distinct society. No, monsieur, that insults me. We are a nation. How do you live in Montreal and not know that? I don't know. All my friends are English. Sorry to insult you. So what is Toronto like? It's good. It's changed a lot since I was there. That was five years ago. There are a lot of good jobs there. There's no violence, no language laws. People can send their kids to English schools. It's safe. Yeah, well, there's no violence here either. People can send their children to English schools here too. What about the language laws? Law 101? Yeah, I thought the children of immigrants weren't allowed to send their children to English schools. They can send them to English private schools or French public schools. Just not English public schools. That's why immigrants choose Toronto over Montreal. They can send their kids to whatever schools they want there. And then there is the other great question. The survival of the French language and culture in Quebec. This issue draws support from many people who are not separatists. There are the huge saint Léonard and Bill 63 demonstrations. The French Canadians insist that if immigrants are allowed to speak English, the French language and culture will vanish into the ocean of English-speaking North America. The immigrants insist on having the right to choose their own language. Yes, we want immigrants to learn French. That's not so bad, is it? No, I guess not. I mean, we don't want our language to disappear. This is our home, after all. Yeah, that's true. But don't you care that Montreal is not the largest city in Canada anymore? No, I don't. It doesn't matter to you? No. Do you really think that Montreal would still be the metropolis of Canada if not for a few bombs? I don't know. But no one would have left. Anglophones feel safe in Toronto. And the bombs were what scared people away? That and the murder of Laporte. Ah! Maybe. You know the history of Quebec? A little. While some French Canadians hide from the police, the government suggests that a number of prominent English Canadians leave Quebec for their own safety. Laporte was a sad situation. The FLQ had little choice. Sure they did. They should have let him go. By killing him, they killed the whole separatist movement. No, monsieur. Sovereignty just started back then. I mean that they stopped the violence by separatists. They learned that the only way they could break up Canada was by democratic means. Yeah, that's true. Levesque means to lead Quebec out of the Canadian Confederation. A similar move by the southern United States had triggered the American Civil War. In Canada, all sides agreed it would be settled in a ballot box. Yeah, that's true, but the Canadian government went too far. 
They rounded up people in the middle of the night. Wow, I didn't know that. I guess they wanted to scare the separatists. It's like fighting fire with fire. Do you like getting out of Montreal? Yeah, it's nice. The fall colors are great. Yeah, I can only take so much of the city. I'd rather be here. Why? Because I love the fresh air. The good restaurants, riding my bike. It's not easy to bike in Montreal. There are too many people trying to kill me. Yeah, you're right. People drive like they're insane. It's even worse than Toronto. Really? Wow. You know, Montreal used to be a big English city. Non, c'est pas vrai. Yeah, it's true. It used to be the capital of Canada. Yes, but that was a very long time ago. It's been a massive exodus. In 20 years, 300,000 English-speaking people have left Montreal, left Quebec. It's one of the great migrations of Canadian history. As the exodus continues and Montreal becomes more and more French, it's hard to believe that there was once a time when this city had more English-speaking citizens than French, a time when the mayor was English, and a time when English Montreal had its own team in the NHL, the Maroons, a team that defeated Les Canadiens and won the Stanley Cup. It's a lot for Montreal to be a big English-Canadian city. What do you mean? I mean, that is asking a lot for Montreal to be the center of French Canada and the center of English Canada. Most people get along, don't they? I guess. It's just that now that Toronto is the center of English Canada and Montreal is the center of French Canada, there is more living space. Geez, I never thought of it that way. Yes, we are 500 kilometers apart. If we all lived in the same city, it would be too much. We'd be fighting for space. I guess. Well, I've got to go. It was nice talking to you. Bonne journée, monsieur. Bonjour à toi.